Hey guys, it's Chris. From some of the people who survived it to some of the stories around its sinking, join me as I reveal nine stories of the Titanic you've never heard. Number nine, what truly sank the Titanic? Given the popularity of the Titanic story from construction to its sinking, there are many simplistic notions about how the doomed vessel sank into the cold waters of the North Atlantic. Ask most people how it sank, and they'll simply tell you that they hit an iceberg and sank as a result. And while it's true that the vessel would not have sunk if they hadn't hit the iceberg, there were multiple factors both before and after that led to the ship going down. Wait, 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 so it wasn't just the iceberg? Come on, what? For example, during the ship's construction, the work on the Titanic changed and was stalled multiple times. Her sister ship, the Olympic, needed repairs as she was active before the Titanic, and so work stopped to do that. What's more, the man designing the ship made changes which affected the timetable, so the Titanic was finished well after she should have been. Thus, if the work had gone as planned and been on time, the iceberg likely wouldn't have been hit. As for the incident itself, when the iceberg hit the ship, the Titanic was built to survive it. However, improper sealing of the watertight compartments caused them to flood. Now, the Titanic could have survived up to four of those compartments flooding, but five were breached. And thus, the sinking began. Also, the men charged with being lookouts for icebergs had to go off visual sight as they didn't have binoculars on them that night. So while the iceberg was a crucial part of the chain of events, it was not the only factor in the sinking at the Titanic, merely one of the catalysts to start what would happen. It's crazy, isn't it? Number eight, Miss Unsinkable. A person is usually very lucky when they survive one traumatic incident, like surviving a boat sinking. And yet, when you survive three in a short amount of time, well, that raises a lot of questions. Mainly, how did they survive all three? And that was the question many asked one Violet Jessup, who was given the nickname of Miss Unsinkable because of her experiences on boats. But not just regular experiences on boats here. She was on the HMS Olympic when it collided with the HMS Hawk. She was on the HMS Britannic when it struck a mine at sea. And she was aboard the Titanic when it hit the infamous iceberg that sank it. Three ships, three different causes of sinking, and yet she still survived. One of the main reasons this is considered to be a major coincidence is the Olympic, Britannic, and the Titanic were sister ships, meaning they were made in the same place by the same company. So an entire family of ships had her on board, sank, and yet she survived. And some of these ships, especially the Titanic, were built to be unsinkable, which they were not, but she clearly was. Number seven, it was predicted by two different authors in two different ways. There have been many times in history that tragic events have unintentionally been predicted, but one rather curious coincidence might be the predicting of the Titanic, which was foretold in good detail by two different authors who noted key things in their stories that would relate to the Titanic years later. One of these happened in 1898. An author named Morgan Robertson wrote a book called The Wreck of a Titan. This was a disaster story about an 800-foot liner that was doomed to hit an iceberg and sink in April while traveling through the North Atlantic. The Titanic was 883 feet long, was going through the North Atlantic, and hit an iceberg and sank on April 14th and 15th sank early in the morning, and the second prediction came from one of the passengers on the Titanic, a journalist and author named William T. Sneed. In 1886, he predicted the event via a story in which two ships collided with each other, which obviously didn't happen to the Titanic. However, he noted in the story that many people lost their lives due to the ship not having enough lifeboats, which he noted after publishing that this could happen to certain sea vessels. Sure enough, the Titanic had enough lifeboats for only less than half of the people on board. Many noted that they weren't even filled to capacity as they were set off. Number six, Navratil Orphans. Due to it being an ocean liner, there were many different kinds of people on board the Titanic, including two children who would be later known as the Navratil Orphans, though their names were Michael and Edmund for the record. They were on the ship because their parents had been in a messy divorce, and their father decided to take them to the New World on the majestic vessel that was the Titanic. When the sinking of the ship occurred, their father Marcel worked hard to get them to the lifeboats. 
In fact, he got them to the literal last lifeboat that was departing from the Titanic. He put them on board and told them the following. My child, when your mother comes for you, as she surely will, tell her that I loved her dearly and still do. Tell her I expected her to follow us so that we might all live happily together in the peace and freedom of the new world. As for what happened to the brothers afterwards, well, they were from France. And so when they arrived in New York with no family waiting for them, they were alone. However, a kind French woman took care of them. The newspapers then found out that they were without their parents, and word reached France where their mother lived, and she came to New York to get them. Number five. There was a movie made of the sinking one month after the event. In modern times, the film Titanic by James Cameron is considered one of the greatest films ever made, not the least of which is the very faithful recreation of the events done by Cameron and his teams on set. He went into painstaking detail into what happened on the ship, even with him creating his own story featuring the passengers. What many don't know, however, is that there was a film made directly after the event occurring, called Saved from the Titanic. What's more, it starred an actress named Dorothy Gibson, who was one of the survivors from the sinking. The film was successful, and Gibson went so far as to wear the dress and shoes that she had worn when the Titanic went down. Saved from the Titanic was a financial hit both in America and overseas, even though there was controversy around it because of it being released a month after the sinking. So where is it now? Well, the studio that had the only reel of the film had a fire. It was burnt up in it, and it was never viewed again. Number 4. Some survivors were turned away at Ellis Island. When considering a tragedy on the scale of the Titanic, and hearing that there were 700 survivors, one would be right to imagine that all of them were taken care of. But that was not the case. At this time in American history, there were heavy racist feelings among certain citizens, including a strong hatred of Chinese. On the Titanic, there were eight Chinese passengers, six of which survived the sinking. But upon making it to Ellis Island, they were met with hate and were eventually turned away. Their names were written out of history, until a recent documentary by Stephen Swenkert called The Six said to tell the true story of what happened to these men. Six Chinese guys made it off the Titanic alive, and 24 hours later were written out of the story, Schwenkert said. That wasn't an accident, it was deliberate. It's something that the culture of the time made happen. The documentary notes that the anti-Chinese sentiments were so high that local newspapers said they were criminals and that they were found wedged between seats in the lifeboats, meaning that they'd snuck onto the lifeboats, which given the situation and the size of the lifeboats would have been impossible. In fact, one account of a survivor was noted to have been reluctantly saved, and yet when he got onto the boat, helped row the boat the most in order to reach a rescue ship. Number 3. The Sound of Music In the film Titanic, there's a scene where the musicians on the boat are playing, and they stop for a while before starting back up again, as they know they likely won't get off the ship, and they feel it best to calm the passengers as they try and be saved. A touching moment, but one that was called into question in terms of accuracy, yet that is exactly what happened. The Titanic did not sink immediately into the waters. It took over two hours to go down after hitting that iceberg. The eight-man orchestra played music during the entire time, and multiple accounts note that they went down with the ship, though the final song that they played during that time has long been disputed. Many historians believe that the music was meant not just to calm the passengers, but to cover up the sounds of sobbing people who felt they were going to die, and thus not affect the other passengers as they tried to flee the ship. The survivors who saw them referred to the group as heroes for what they did. Number 2. Multiple newspapers claimed there were no lives lost lost. Back in the 1900s, newspapers were one of the main sources of information all over the world. So the headlines the day after the Titanic sank and news was written about it were no doubt gripping to all who saw it. However, in the case of three different newspapers, The World, The Daily Mail, and The Belfast Telegraph, they had incorrectly stated that while the ship sank, the ship had lost no lives in the process. Which is an obvious faux pas because the vessel lost over 1,500 people upon sinking into the waters. And part of the reason for this error was the time difference regarding reports reaching overseas. Many of the American newspapers were able to print more accurate headlines of the incident and continued to refine information later. Number 1. The Engineers Who Kept Things Going when the Titanic struck the iceberg and began to sink, many different events happened. But one thing that many didn't notice was that the lights and ship's functions were still going. This was because in the engine room, every single engineer on the ship was working hard to keep the ship going in all manners that mattered. 
They kept the lights on so people could see. As it sank in the early morning and it was still dark out, they made sure the radios were still active so they could send out distress signals and more. They even kept the water pumps going to attempt to keep the ship afloat longer. No engineer survived the sinking, and accounts note that the lights only went out when the ship was fully sunk. 25 engineers died in total. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these stories from the Titanic? Did you learn anything new about the sinking of the ship? Do you know of another story that could have been on our list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.